Hey everyone, how's it going today? So I'm going to be showing you how to animate and simulate in Blender today. And I'm going to go through a lot of things, so I'm going to just go ahead and get started. When you first open Blender, you're going to be presented with this cube here. And so I'll show you how to make a basic animation with this cube. Now, there's a section down at the bottom that is open by default that's called the timeline. Okay, and that's a crucial part of your animating ability because this green line is going to represent your movement through time and what we're going to be doing is setting keyframes along this timeline to designate locations when things should change so what I want to do is have this cube go from left to right across the screen and so what I'm going to do is set a keyframe at the beginning to have the cube start at the left and set a keyframe at the end of the timeline to have the cube end at the right so it's a real simple animation what I'm going to do is bring it to its starting position and bring this green playhead to the beginning and I'm going to push I on the keyboard and this is going to pull up the insert keyframe menu and what I'm going to want to click on is loc rote scale which stands for location rotation scale so I'm going to lock that in place and if you notice when you drag your playhead to the right you can see the yellow keyframe there and I'm going to bring the playhead all the way to the end right around 250 and I'm gonna move the cube to the right because this is where we want it to move and I'm gonna set another keyframe and by the way just make sure your mouse is somewhere in the center of the screen when you push this I key and set another low rote scale now if I want to play through the animation you see down here there are the play buttons so what I'm gonna do is click go to the beginning and click play and you can see the cube is slowly moving to the other side and another part of animating that is really important is another section that they call dope sheet. So I'm just going to pause this. You can see it made it almost to its destination. Let me just play it there. Um, I'll leave it right there because you can see where it went. So to open the dope sheet, I'm going to start a whole new section just by dragging this corner up. And I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch the editor type to dope sheet. And you can see right here we have this section now with these little yellow diamonds and this is essentially going to control these keyframes down in your timeline so if I wanted to have the cube go real quick what I can do is right click on the diamond and just like moving an object I'm gonna push G and move the keyframe way closer maybe around I'll put it right on keyframe 60 now the cube is gonna go much faster because it has much less frames to get across the screen so I'm gonna go back to the beginning and hit play you can see it, it scoots right across the screen there. Whenever I'm animating, I, I usually have these two windows open, the dope sheet and the um, timeline at the bottom. And sometimes I'll pull the dope sheet up a little bit so you can see more um, objects. Once you start adding more and more objects, this list is going to get longer and longer, so you might want to have your dope sheet longer. So let's go ahead and add another keyframe. I'm going to zoom out a little bit on the main screen here, and I'm going to make the cube get bigger and let's 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 not only do a scale and make it get bigger but let's also do a rotate so let's have this cube get larger and turn at the same time so what I'm gonna do is push S to make it bigger and push R and rotate along the Z axis um, I'll do about a 360 okay and by the way, you're going to want to make sure that when you're scaling and rotating your object that your keyframe is where you want it to be on the timeline. So um, to lock this in place in the animation, I'm just going to push I again and loc rote scale. Okay, now let's see how this looks. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and hit play. It scoots over and it should start getting bigger. And you see that? It, it gets bigger and it spins. That looks very nice. And I can keep playing it over and over again and uh, see how that looks and just real quick I want to switch the color on this so I'm gonna go to the material tab and click new and just change the diffuse color to something that looks nice ooh I like this this turquoise shade over here so now we got a nice turquoise alright so what if I didn't want to necessarily animate this cube and didn't want to have it on a set path well what I can do is actually create a simulation in Blender and that's one of the cool things about Blender you can actually have this thing act like it's in the real world so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that 
and so I'm going to delete these two keyframes. They're already selected, but if they're not on your screen, I'm going to right click on one, hold shift, and right click on the other, and then just push X, and it'll delete both keyframes once you click on it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drag this to the center of the screen, and actually maybe even pick it up a little bit. And what I'm going to show you how to do is to basically simulate dropping this box onto a flat floor. And so to create the floor, I'm going to add in a plane object. And it's way over here. I'm just going to bring it up so that it is under the cube. I'm going to scale it up a little bit and move it over. And let's make this thing look like grass. So I'm going to switch the color to uh, grassy color. Uh, it's a little too bright for, for grass, so I will make it a little darker. And um, I, actually, I, I like the looks of this matrix looking green here. So I'm just going to leave that. And I'm going to select the cube. And I'm going to make it a soft body. So you do that by going to the physics section here, clicking on it, and you're going to make the cube a soft body. All right. And I'm going to uncheck soft body goal. And so let's see if this worked. I'm going to go ahead, just like how we animated before, I'm going to set the, um, now wait a minute, do you see how this cube moved? What I'm going to want to do is actually delete this final keyframe because it, it keeps going back to that initial keyframe that we selected. So sorry about that. Let's go ahead and delete that keyframe. And let's bring the cube up back to where we had it. And since it has no soft body goal, it should fall when I hit play. So I'm going to hit play. And you can see it falls, and it keeps going through the the our grass floor. And I'm not sure if it just keeps on going for infinity, but it fell through our floor. So in order to prevent this, and you can see it, it's repeating because it went through the timeline. So to prevent this, what I'm going to do is select the plane, and also in the physics tab, I'm going to select collision. Okay, and this will allow the it it allow the the box to stop when it hits the the floor. So now let's test it again and you can see it falls and it bounces on the floor which I think is really cool and you can change the the weight of the box and how much bounciness it has all by selecting on the cube or box whatever you want to call it and in your physics section you have all these different options so you know if I wanted the mass to be very heavy or very large so it'd be a very heavy cube I'll, I'll crank it up to 10 and let's hit play and let's see how it looks now. And you can see it really crunches into itself because it's so heavy and so massive. And so actually that's a little bit too much. Um, I could slow down the animation if I wanted to um, down to point 0.1. Let's go ahead and play. And you can see now it's slowly falling. It's almost like a slow motion effect which which is very surreal. That's a, that's a cool looking thing. Um, and it's just taking forever, so I'm just going to hit pause and go back. Let's, let's crank this back up to 1, and just so you can see how the speed works. And also there's friction, which you can crank up, and you can think of it as like friction in the air. Um, so it'll slowly go down, even though the speed is back to 1. Um, it, it, it slowly bounces down. Um, let me crank it up even more just so you can see. So it's almost like floating down, and then it finally hits. Okay, so you can change all that with the friction. Now, what if I didn't want the cube to bounce necessarily and be strong? I could get rid of it being a soft body, and I can actually switch it to being a, a piece of cloth. Okay, so it'll be like a cloth cube. And so I clicked on cloth, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and start the animation again. And you see it just kind of falls into a, a flat square. Um, what I'm going to do is switch the angle of this cube just by pushing R and giving it a different angle. And let's see what it does now. So let's hit play. And you can see it's, it's a weird sort of pyramid looking thing. Now the reason it's not really collapsing like a cloth normally would is because it doesn't have any subdivisions in its surface. So if you hit tab and switch to object mode when the cube is selected, you're going to be in your you're going to be able to see the subdivisions and you can just see there's one square for each side of the cube okay so what I want to do is make more squares for each side of the cube so I'm gonna scroll down here on the side and click subdivide and subdivide it 
just so it looks like that. So there's a bunch of squares on each side. It doesn't matter how much. But the more subdivisions you put on the surface, the more demanding it's going to be on your system. So I'm going to switch out of edit mode. And now that it has more subdivisions, it should look more like a piece of cloth when it falls. So I'm going to go back and hit play. And there. You can see it looks like a very pixelated piece of cloth, which actually looks kind of cool. And so I'm going to hit stop on that. And let me just show you some of the other um, cool effects that you can do with this um, simulating idea. So what I'm going to do is click on the object menu here, go up to quick effects, and I can add fur to this cube if I wanted to. Um, but what I want to do is click on quick explode, which I think is cool. And when I hit play on this, the cube is basically going to fragment into pieces and hit the ground and bounce. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you can see it bounces around. I want to get rid of the quick explode effect, so I'm going to just go ahead and hit Control Z. And let's add a different effect, the quick smoke effect. And this will essentially allow this cube to smoke. And what I'm going to do is go back to the beginning, hit play. And you can see the, the cube cloth thing that we have uh, lets off some smoke when it, when it falls down. And what I'm going to do is actually make the smoke square here. I'm going to make it bigger so that you can see or so that it stays smoking even when it hits the ground. So I'm going to uh, make it bigger with scale and drag it down a little bit. And let's start over. And now you can see it, it'll stay smoking even when it hits the ground, which is cool. It's like a very hot piece of cube-like cloth, Okay, just like the real world. Now, I want to show you how you can animate a line in Blender. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the cube by selecting it and pushing X to delete, and also get rid of the smoke effect. And what I'm going to want to do is go ahead and add in a line under the curve menu. Actually, it's called a path, um, but essentially it's a line that you can animate. And you can see it pulls in this very thin line that you can barely see. So to make this larger, I'm going to, want, I'm going to make sure I'm selected over here on the Data tab. And I'm going to make this the Fill. I'm going to switch the Fill to Full. And I'm going to make the Bevel Depth much bigger. So you can see that it's now a line you can make out much easier. And what I want to do is actually add some curves to this line. So I'm going to switch to Edit Mode. And if I move some of these vertices um, and extrude by pushing E, I can I can add some length to this line and give it some curves. Kind of looks like a telephone cord, um, but I'm going to show you how you can animate through this curve. And so what I'm going to do is get out of edit mode, and I'm going to go over here to this end value. And you can see when you drag it down, it goes through the path. So what I'm going to do is bring the timeline to the beginning and I'm actually going to bring the end all the way down to zero and I'm going to push I while hovering over the end value and that'll set a keyframe so we're going to start right here and then I'll go up I'll say we'll go to 80 frames on the timeline and I'm going to bring the end value all the way up and push I to set another keyframe value and now when I go back and hit play you can see it's animating through that curve that we created now I was thinking we could try and simulate this curve now I'm not sure if this will grow as it falls, but I think it'd be a cool little experiment. Um, so what I'm going to do is, just like we did with the cube, I'm going to set the path to a soft body and get rid of the soft body goal. And I'm going to go back to the beginning and hit play. And you can see it falls and it grows at the same time. So it's kind of cool. You can be very creative when you're playing around with these different tools. And one final thing I want to talk about is the camera. I haven't talked about it at all, but if you want to actually render these animations, what you're going to want to do is select on the camera, and what I do is if you have a keyboard with a keypad on the side, just go ahead and push zero, and it'll bring you to the um, camera's viewpoint. So I could leave the camera right here, and that'd be all well and good, um, but what I'd like to do is have the camera move during the animations. So you can make a high quality animation. And one of the first things that I do when, whenever I'm animating with a camera is I add in an empty cube. And the empty cube is going to serve as a focal point for the camera. And I'll show you how you can do that. So I'm going to select on the camera and I'm going to go over here 
to the constraints menu and I'm gonna add an object constraint and I'm gonna click on track to and I'm gonna set the Y to be the up axis and I'm gonna set this to negative Z and the target that I'm gonna have for this camera is the empty cube that I just added in and you can see the camera looks at the cube no matter where I put the camera the the cube is where the camera is going to, going to be pointing at so if you don't believe me I'm gonna push zero and you can see that the camera is pointing at the cube so the cube is going this empty box is going to be our focal point so I'm gonna go back to the beginning um, let's see where this string is um, falling so it starts up here so what I'm gonna do is just like I showed you in the beginning I'm, I'm gonna animate this cube but it's actually gonna be animating the camera focal point so what I'm gonna do is put this cube right here at the beginning and set a keyframe just like we did before and let's go through the animation and when it falls and hits the ground and I'm gonna bring the box down to uh, try and get into the center of this um, string here and set another keyframe and so when I hit play you can see this um, empty box follows the string going down and actually it goes a little bit too slow so what I'm going to do is select on one of the keyframes here and bring it back a little bit just so the cube comes down a little bit quicker so to see what this looks like right now I'm gonna push zero on the um, keypad and actually I'm gonna click on camera so to make sure I'm looking through the camera lens and I'm gonna go back to the beginning and hit play and you can see the camera follows the looks like a piece of rope falling down it's like a growing piece of rope as it falls now I can also move the camera while it's doing this so it's not only going to stay looking at the our piece of rope but the camera itself will be moving too so I'm gonna make sure the camera is selected go to the beginning and set a keyframe for the camera um, actually maybe I have maybe I want to have this camera come in and really watch it as it falls so I'm gonna bring the camera out a little bit and push I just like how we set the keyframe for the cube and then go towards the end here and I'll bring the camera all the way to the other side and bring it down so let's see how this looks actually I wanna see where where it's ending up um, and I'm gonna move while I'm looking at the camera lens I'm gonna push G and Y and kind of um, move this around a little bit and okay this looks like a good final point so I'm gonna push I and set look rote scale and let's see how this looks so I'm gonna hit play and it comes in a little bit off when it's looking at the rope um, in this middle section it, it's it's not um, it's 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 missing part of the rope when it comes in so actually I'm, I'm gonna get the cube to just go a little bit quicker here so I'm gonna bring the keyframe back so that it's looking down more and let's try this one more time so I'm gonna hit play I'm going backwards by accident. I'm going to hit play. And there. That's cool. So it gets a little um, rope animation. So I just wanted to show you as many things as I could with the animating and simulating in Blender. Just a basic starting point for anyone that's interested. And I hope that if you're interested in more videos like this, you subscribe. And I thank you all for watching. And I hope you have an awesome day.